This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. Hey guys, Big Paul here today and we are going to talk about setting up your macros for carb cycling diets. I like carb cycling. I've been running carb cycling for several years. I've done pretty much every type of diet that you can imagine over my time in this game. And I have found that carb cycling is the most efficient way to pack on size and to maintain that size and fullness as a bodybuilder. You can go through my Instagram page and see all of the guys that I have worked with. Literally the only thing we change in a major way it has nothing to do with the PEDs like a lot of guys think. Now, sometimes PEDs are adjusted and they do work and they do help. But the carb cycling in the diet is what matters the most. I have had many guys that literally the only thing I change is their diet. Sometimes we even lower doses of PEDs and we make adjustments to their diet and boom, they transform. And carb cycling is a great way to maximize your physique enhancement if your goal is to have a bigger, leaner physique. I, I found nothing that works better. Now, that's not to say it's the only way. There are many ways you can do this. But I'm going to go through my process on how I calculate the macros. I don't have a set formula that I use for people. I have initial numbers that I start off with. But I found that metabolisms and response vary greatly from person to person. So a lot of this is nuanced and you have to make adjustments based on how your body responds. I'll have a baseline diet that I start off with with most of people. And then we just adjust and adjust and adjust from there based on how they respond. Sometimes we nail it out of the gate. Most times we don't, but we adjust and we see how the body reacts to the macros and then we keep moving and it's a constant thing like you can't you can't use the same things that you did before so like what i did last year might not work this year what i did two weeks ago might not work this year so you have to watch the body see how it responds and you adjust macros from there and i'm going to show you how i do it in just one second All right, guys, we are going to dig into how I calculate macros for carb cycling. It really depends on what your objectives are and how we structure the diet. The, the outline and the parameters of it really are sort of the same. We have some wild cards we deal with, whether you're in fat loss phase or whether you're in a hypertrophy phase. And I hypertrophy phase where you're going to push the carbs as high as we can get away with without you getting fat that's our goal i have a baseline we start off with and i'll share my sort of rough math on how i do that and then i make adjustments from there sometimes up sometimes down i found that people vary wildly in how they respond to the diet I, i've given up on trying to have one go-to way to uh, to have the macro set up. I, I'll tell you, I get people reach out to me all the time and they ask me if I can just set up a one-time diet for them, which I can do, but the problem with doing that, that's not where the magic comes in. The magic comes in from making the week-to-week -week adjustments. And I know it sounds like I'm selling coaching, which is what I do, but I... I mean, you just... You, there's no way to predict how your body's going to respond over the long term. What happened last year may not happen this year and you need to have a critical eye and look is this person gaining fat are they getting too bloated are they not losing fat fast enough and there's some nuance and things that you adjust and sometimes we just have to kind of throw some shit at the wall and see what sticks really i mean it's you know I, i've had some people that have had some challenging metabolisms that i can't quite figure out at times and we have to play around with how the macros are balanced out to see what they respond to. 
especially in fat loss phases. And then I've had some people that I can just feed ungodly amounts of food to like, we literally reach a point where we are at maximum capacity of what they can eat in good food. And we have to start throwing some trash food in there to get them to grow. So there's really some nuance to it, but I'll show you sort of the baseline of how I calculate the things. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll dig into all that. Let's start with a muscle gain cycle first. Let's say usually how I assess a physique when a physique come, somebody comes into me and wants to start a fat loss or a hypertrophy phase. My rule of thumb is if you have fat rolls, if you can't see at least the outlines of your abs, you're probably too fat to be doing a hypertrophy phase unless you're a power lifter you know, then, <laughs> or strong man, or an offensive lineman or something like that, then all bets are out the window. You probably want that additional size for your sport. But if you're a physique athlete, if you can't see your abs, you're probably wasting your time doing a hypertrophy phase. You're just going to get fatter and fatter and you it's going to be even harder when you cut down and you're going to end up losing a bunch of muscle. There's just no two ways around it. When you go into a fat loss phase, you are going to lose some tissue but the leaner you are, the less tissue that you lose. So we need to be in a reasonable body composition. People ask me all the time what body fat percentage that is. I have no idea. I don't really, I, I don't go by body fat percentages. I don't get hung up on that. What the pictures look like, what, what you look like in the mirror is what matters to me the most. So let's assume this guy, this hypothetical client that I have is lean. Well, we'll say he is a 200 pound competitor and he wants to do a hypertrophy phase. So for the medium days, I usually start off around 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. So I don't need the calculator to do that. So we know that that is 240 grams of protein per day. So that is going to work out in a six meal plan. I usually set this up in a six meal plan. That works out to be uh, around 40 grams per meal, not counting the e EAA. So our protein requirements for this hypothetical 200 pound bodybuilder is going to be 40 grams per meal. So I, I will fill that in and you'll see here I have uh, meals one through four and then pre-workout and post-workout. This is a trick I learned from Justin Harris and the reason uh, we set it up this way and it makes a lot of sense when you think about it. People work out at different times a day. Not everybody works out you know in the evening. This This would be I work out at night, so I'm, I'm in the gym at 7 p.m. or whatever, and this works out perfectly for me because I have my meals one through four and then my pre-workout meal and then my post-workout meals right before bed, but that doesn't work out that way for everybody. So you can slide the pre- and post-workout meals in between whatever your meals one through four are. Let's say you work out in the afternoon, you might have meal one, two, and then your pre-workout meal would be your you know, in the afternoon and then your post-workout meal would be after your workout and then you do meals three and four after that. And the reason we set it up that way is because we're going to shove more carbs in around our workout and we do lower fat around our workout, mainly because we're pushing the carbs higher and you don't want that fat sitting in your stomach. I know there are some guys that like to push the fat a little higher and also, you know, there's the insulin factor. <laughs> if you're going to be using insulin pre and post-workout, you don't want to be taking fats in with it. All right, so carbohydrates, I usually, depending on how somebody responds, if I have somebody that's super lean, you know, that seems to be, um, it was ectomorph, that, that tends to be skinny, I'll start off, I'll, I'll be aggressive, I'll start off with two grams of carbs, 1.75 to two grams of carbs, let's, let's just say two. So we're talking about 400 grams of carbs uh, for this hypothetical 200 pound bodybuilder. So, um, you know, we, you know, it, roughly, you know, so we'll just do some rough math. So let, let's see what we can work out here. So we'll do 50, 50, 50, 50, and then 75 and 75 and 75 pre and post workout. So that takes us up to, uh, 375 close enough. All right. For fat, you do not need a ton of fat. And w w with these diets, this, this is another thing that I learned from Justin Harris. We are using added fat. We're not counting the fat that's in our protein sources because there's no real way to quantify that. Uh, I know that 
guys freak out when I say that in that how can you not count the fat in your protein sources? It's because there's there's no way to know how much fat is actually in that steak that you're eating. It's not like it's made in a lab or a factory. And just like human beings, that cow has a different body fat level. Every cow has a different body fat level. So, you know, and there's no way to determine how much fat is actually in that. What I tell people is to get the leanest cuts of meat they possibly can get. So we can keep that variable as low as we possibly can. So chicken breast, you know, we know that chicken breast is going to be very lean. You know, one might, one chicken breast you might get might be 1% body fat in that chicken breast and another one might be four but you know so it averages out to you know you'll say chicken breast is 98 percent or 97 percent lean or whatever i usually use lean ground beef it says that it's 96 percent lean ground beef my training partner used to work in a butcher shop and he told me that what they do at the butcher shop how they tell the difference between the 90s six and the 90 and the 80 10 is they just look at the meat and say yeah that looks like 90 and they throw it in the grinder. So there's no way that they, uh, you know, there's no weights or there's no way that they're calculating anything. They're just guessing. If you're guessing, why even quantify it? There's no reason to quantify it. We reduce that variable by making that meat as lean as possible. With our carbs, we want our carbs to be as close as possible to zero fat. Predominantly, my carbs are rice and if you're cooking rice in a rice cooker there should be no fat in it anyway so we have zero fats in our carbs and then we are going to add in efas as our added fats for health and for cellular repair and um vitamin uptake what 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 you know all the different things that fats do but you don't need a ton of fats so somewhere you know the the rough math is somewhere around 0 0.0 or 0.3 grams per pound of body weight and you probably don't even need that much so it's a very minimal amount of, of fats. On a bulking diet, I usually start off with something around 10 grams of fat per meal, sometimes 14 um, per meal with one A um, for the added EFAs. And the reason I do it this way, or usually, let's just, let's just go with 14 for this guy. Let's say 14. All right, we're going to go with 14. And 14 works out to be... A tablespoon of olive oil or roughly it works out to be a tablespoon of olive oil and you can measure it out if you're going to use nuts or whatever um, you can measure it out but I think it's roughly 14 grams of fat per per tablespoon of olive oil so, somewhere around there the nice even number that I have here with the 50 grams of carbs the reason I do it that way is because there's roughly 50 grams of carbs in a cup of rice a cup of jasmine rice roughly it's not exact I like to measure my stuff on a food scale, so I have it exact, but if you're in the off-season, you don't have to be that exact. For pre- and post-workout, we are going to do zero, and so for this hypothetical competitor, so we see here uh, 0 0.03, we're roughly at 0 0.03 grams of fat per pound of body weight, so we're at 56. You're going to have some fats in the proteins, so we're probably a a slightly over that number, so you probably have an additional... 15, 20 grams of fat that's coming from your lean protein sources through the day. So we're around 70 grams of total fat, 75, something like that. The high uh, carb day, when we are doing our, usually when I set up a high carb day, usually is going to be somewhere around three to four, probably closer to four grams of um, carbs per pound of body weight. You know, we're going to get aggressive with it. And we're going to lower the protein on those days. One, because protein fills you up and you need to be have the room to get the extra carbs in on that day. And carbohydrates are and insulin are muscle sparing, protein sparing. So you don't need the extra protein on those days. So usually I'll pull the protein down to one gram per pound of body weight. So I'm just rough math. You know, we're going to be around 200 grams. I, I like using even numbers, so it makes it easier to measure. So we'll probably start off with something like 35. And that puts us right at 210. Close enough. All right. You could probably take it even lower if you want it. You could probably take it down to 0.7 grams. I mean, that's what studies show that is the minimum needed. But we're enhanced and we want to play 
a little bit conservatively, so I like to overshoot a little bit. We probably don't even need as much protein as we have in these diets. So for carbs, let's just say we are going, let's go with uh, three, three and a half, somewhere around there. So we'll be around 700 grams of carbs for, for, for this, this competitor. Doing the math on that, that would be divided out by six meals. We need around a uh, little over 100 grams per meal. So let's start off with, uh, let's see what we got here. We'll plug this in. Let's go with 125 pre-workouts, 125 post-workout, right at 700. All right, once again, nice even numbers here. Two cups of rice, two cups of rice, two cups of rice, two cups of rice, cup and a quarter of rice, cup and a quarter of rice. On the high carbohydrate day, you can use 50% of your carbs can come from any zero fat sugar source or close to zero fat. It doesn't have to be at zero. So you guys will see me when I post on Instagram and things like that. I'll have my Captain Crunch day or whatever or eating breakfast cereal. That's how you can get away with doing the breakfast cereal on the high carbohydrate day. Or I'll do things like gummy bears orange juice. I'm trying to think of some other things. Apple pie filling. Jam is another thing that I'll use. I'll put jam on my rice. So you want, you want to keep things as close to zero. What, what, you know, one big reason I do it that way is because it's just impossible. You wouldn't be able to eat that much rice. It's, I mean, you're talking about 700 grams. You're talking about 14 cups of rice in a day. That is a lot of fucking rice to get down. All right. I don't know. I, I can't eat. I can't eat fourteen cups of rice in a day. That's you know. That's two and a, I don't know. That's a lot of rice. So we'll get half of it from a sugary source. That makes it e easier. We're not going to add any fat to this day. So in our protein sources are going to be super lean this day. Most often I'll use chicken. I will use cod on my high day. Sometimes I'll even have a protein shake. I know you guys are going to freak out uh, because I said I don't like protein shakes. Protein shakes are okay once in a while. You shouldn't treat them like eating them like it's your job. All right. That's the difference. Uh, and protein shakes, whey protein, a lot of people, even if it is a high quality whey, have whey intolerances and it upsets your stomach. But sometimes I would, you know, here's my thing I tell my clients. I would rather you drink a whey shake than miss a meal. And make sure that it's a high quality whey protein, that it's a high quality isolate. Stay away from anything that is um, whey concentrate. Whey concentrate is terrible on your gut. We want to stay away from that. We have our high day uh, set up here. And usually I will run insulin on my high day to help accommodate all these carbs. You might not need it if you're younger. As you get older, you may or may not. The insulin is optional. I, I leave it up to the individual if they want to do that. Okay, and then the intro workout shake. On both days, you'll see I do an intro workout shake. Uh, it is on the medium days. It is 10 grams of carbohydrates. Or, I mean, sorry, 10 grams of amino acids, essential amino acids, and 25 grams of carbohydrates, which typically comes from a high molecular uh, carbohydrate, so you get a steady release during your workout and it does not upset your stomach. I use highly branched cyclic dextrin. I use field rations from First Detachment Nutrition. Shout out to my sponsor. And it field rations, the reason I have these portions set up this way because it matches what the field rations portion size is. So we have 10 grams of EAAs and 25 grams of carbohydrates in a scoop of field rations. It makes it easy. I just take a scoop of field rations on my high day. We double it. We're doing 20 EAAs and 50 carbohydrates. So we are doubling that portion on the high days. Field rations, if you want to pick it up from First Detachment, use my discount code AB10, firstdetachment.com. All right, so back to this. Uh, the low day. Low days are going to be your off day. Let me back up for a second. Let's go back to the high day. On the high day, normally we come out of the gate with two high days per week. And those are non-consecutive training days. You don't want to do it back to back because you should be 
you should be fully filled out. Your glycogen store should be fully filled out from that high carbohydrate days. Now, I have found that some people with super fast metabolisms need three high days a week. They will need uh, three high days a week, but most people too is plenty. And at the end of that high day, there is an optional, and I quote, optional cheat meal. It doesn't mean you have to take the cheat meal. I usually only do the cheat meal once a week. The cheat meal is really there for psychological purposes more than anything. It's just to give you a break so you can go out to dinner with your girlfriend, your partner, whatever. Enjoy yourself and live like a normal human being. And I find that when you allow people to have a cheat meal, it's less likely that they will go off track on the diet. The cheat meal, you know, if you only have to wait a couple more days until a cheat meal, I find that people are more compliant with the diet. Yes, uh, there's no physiological need for a cheat meal, especially in this much of a caloric surplus. You don't need it. But it's there as an optional um, an optional thing. Now, there are some people, the caveat, there are some people that are hard gainers that I do have to feed some trash to. With the cheat meals, I try to keep the cheat meals clean-ish. And I want to have a productive cheat meal. I don't want to have a cheat meal that's going to wreck my physique. And what I mean by that, I have a video up if you want to check it out on the difference between a clean and a dirty cheat meal. What I mean by a clean cheat meal is a meal that has a quality protein and carbohydrate source, but has an extra fat in it. So an example would be a steak and a potato or sushi. Or even a burger and fries. And you think about it with a burger and fries, you're really eating beef and potatoes. There's just a lot of extra fat in there. So what I would consider a trash meal or an unproductive meal is something that is going to screw your gut up the next day. Pizza, donuts, ice cream, crap like that. Just going off on a binge for the sake of having a binge. That's trash food. Or hammering a bag of Doritos. Stuff like that. That, that. that is not productive for our bodybuilding goals. So that, that's not what we want for a cheat meal. All right. So for the low days, the, the low days are non-lifting days. And we pull the calories down. And the reason we do that is, one, to help with body composition. Let our gut have a rest. You know, I know there. I, I've seen an argument that people have made that your low days are when you're recovering and that you need extra food on those low days. I disagree with that. <laughs> so I don't think you need as much as you think when you're low days. Your energy expenditure is lower because you're not doing anything. So you don't need a ton of carbohydrates. And when you think about it, the only thing that carbohydrates do, they're a fuel source. They serve no other purpose other than being a fuel source. You can make an argument that fats have other purposes in the body for cellular repair, vitamin uh, transport, yada, yada, yada. There's a, you know, there are no essential carbs. There are essential fats. There are essential amino acids. There are no essential carbohydrates. So carbs are our wild card here. All right, so... Same deal here. We're going to go with our baseline protein on the low day, which is 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. So we end up with 200 grams. Of, I'm sorry. Yes, 200. What did we, what did I screw up here? Yep. Oh, I missed the meal six. Sorry. So 240 grams of carbs. So we're at our 1.2 grams per pound of body weight with the hypothetical body, 200 pound bodybuilder we have here. The carbs, depending on the person's body composition, if somebody tends to get fat easily, I'll pull them down to almost no carbs sometimes. I'll, sometimes I'll just have them do vegetables and, pro, and fat and protein on the low day. If somebody struggles with their insulin sensitivity, if their insulin sensitivity stinks and their glucose levels get too high, then we will pull those carbs down to almost zero. If somebody is lean has good insulin sensitivity, I will push it up as high as one gram of carbohydrates per pound of body weight. So we'll pull this down to, we'll, we'll do this at one gram per pound of body weight. So this would be around 200 grams of carbs. So somewhere around 35 per meal. All right, 210 grams, close enough. With the added fat, we are going to do more fat since we are using less carbohydrates. This is where we get our, you know, if you want to talk about recovery for that day, we'll put a little extra EFAs in for that. So that makes up some of the difference for the uh, the energy 
intake and allows us our glucose sensitivity to recover a bit from lowering the carbs. If I have somebody that's uh, really fat, like I said, somebody who struggles with keeping body composition check or struggles with keeping their their blood sugar in check, I will lower them down to to almost none. All right, so I will say 10 grams of carbs for that hypothetical person. And when I say 10 grams of carbs, I have it noted here, important, load A, when it says 10 grams of carbs, this means veggies only. So we are getting our carbohydrates from non-starchy veggies on that day. All right, so that would be for the person who struggles with insulin sensitivity or gains fat easily, we'll pull them down to almost no carbs, well, no starchy carbs on that day. So it will be 10 grams of carbs or less. This means only veggies for your carb source. Now, if we were going to shift this to a cut, I'm, I'm going to probably go over my time on this video and make it longer than I intended. The wild card that well, we have two wild cards we can play with, but the first wild card we play with is carbohydrates. We never mess with protein. We are never going to cut protein for the sake of losing, losing fat. Never cut protein for the sake of losing fat. That is the baseline protein that we need to make sure that we're maintaining our muscle mass. Okay. So we don't want to fuck with that at all. We leave that in place always. That is a constant. And sometimes even on a hard diet, we'll even raise it a little bit. One reason I do that is because protein is satiating. If I find somebody struggling with appetite Issues, you know, an extra, you know, a couple grams of protein can make a big difference as far as satiation. But carbs are our wild card. The first thing I will cut will be the carbs outside of the workout window. We're going to leave the carbs in place in the workout window. So just, you know, a hypothetical example here. Let's say we take these down to zero or sorry, let's do 10. We'll say veggie, veggies only. All right, we'll leave that in place. So this would be if I wanted to shift to a cut. Typically, the high day on a cut, what we'll do is we'll move the high day down to one high day per week. And people, it always blows people's minds. They, they think that they can't have this excess amount of carbs on their high day when they're cutting. But you can because you it's sort of a manipulation or a trick of your energy storage and management systems in your body. If you think about it, you you should be glycogen depleted by the time you get to your high day, if you're doing one high day a week. And what you're doing on that high day is refilling your glycogen stores and not adding fat. So it is a trick. It's a trick of the energy storage systems of the body. Your body is going to store excess energy in either glycogen or adipose. So we're manipulating that energy management system in the body and refilling the glycogen stores. Hopefully we don't have a spillover into fat if we've nailed our macros correctly in the off season. And then the low day, same deal here on the low day. I would bring that down to zero starchy carbs on a cut. It's, it's really that simple. Now where the nuance comes in, these are baselines. Where the nuance comes in, some people are stubborn at losing fat and you have to play around with other macros. We may have to bring the carbs down super low on the medium and low days or almost to nothing. It may be just a little bit of carbs in the pre and post workout window. We may have to manipulate fat. We may have to take the fat down to almost zero. Some people run better off of carbs. I happen to be one of those people. I can deal with a low fat diet better than I can with a low carb diet. If, 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 if I take the carbs out of my diet, I feel like shit. My performance in the gym goes. <clears throat> Some people aren't that way. And when you look at a lot of these bodybuilding diets that claim to be keto, they aren't really keto. They're just carb cycling because they still have a refeed day. They still have a refeed day, which is essentially a high carbohydrate day. All right. So the variable, the first variable, like I said, whether we're gaining or losing weight is going to be to push carbs up and push carbs down. Fat, there's not so much you can do with it. Really, this is probably as high as I would go with fat in the off season. I just keep pushing carbs up. And if we need some extra fat in there, what I'll do is just have somebody have a trash, a tr not a trash cheat meal, but a higher fat cheat meal. Eat a burger, eat a steak. 
you know, go have a piece of salmon for their last meal on their on their high day. That's kind of what, you know, if we need to get some extra calories in there, that's usually how I do it. So we limit the window of those extra calories. And what this does, it preserves body composition. What I found is that people stay leaner. You'll see with my clients, you'll see it in my pictures, that people stay leaner as they gain weight when it is a high carbohydrate lower fat diet it seems to result in a better body composition i know there's going to be people that are going to go insane the people that love the high fat diets i but they just generally do not have the same body composition they do not have the same fullness and roundness and i found that this works fantastically so i would you know this is how i do it i'm not saying it's the only way this is my way of doing carb cycling all right, guys, I hope you found this one helpful. I love carb cycling. <laughs> it has worked fantastically for me. I've seen it work great in a lot of my clients. If you have questions about it, put it in the comment section below. I really appreciate each and every one of you watching my channel. Take care. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.